San Francisco, the commercial and cultural center of California, USA. From delicious food in Chinatown to road trips at Yosemite, the Bay has it all. It's been two years since we've last been to San Francisco, so we wanted to see how things have changed, and this travel guide will show you exactly that. Before we get to that, we need to settle three documents for you to get onto your flight. But if you want to skip all these admin stuff, you can just jump to this timestamp. Number one, your vaccination cert. Head over to this website and retrieve it with your SingPass. The vaccination cert will be sent to your email. Number two, your entry permit. You can apply for ESTA over at this website. You have to apply at least 72 hours before your flight, so don't forget. The permit will be sent to your email too. Number three, your pretty budget ART results. You have to take an ART test within 24 hours of your flight, and you can choose to do it at a clinic or a tele-supervised test at home. Links to everything will be in the description below. Nice, so we have one last thing to do. Before your flight back to Singapore, you need to fill up an SG arrival card. It takes a little bit of time for the form to be sent to your email, so we recommend that you do it on the way to SFO Airport and get it out of the way. And remember to check all the official sources before you fly because they are changing all the time. Okay, and we are done. Back to the program. We took a direct flight from Singapore Changi Airport to San Francisco with United Airlines. It's a 14-hour direct flight, which is perfect because we didn't need to fuss over any layover mishaps. And it was a really comfy flight. We were seated in the United Polaris cabin, United Airlines business class. They had nice food, a huge range of entertainment options, but the best part were the seats. They reclined all the way down. Sure. And it's a really great way to start your trip. So the first thing you want to do is to hit up the attractions in San Francisco. And if you're craving for excitement, you can head over to Six Flags Discovery Kingdom and we spend the entire day running around the park trying to ride as many rides as we possibly could. And the ones we managed to catch were really, really fun. Okay, so now we're heading over to Batman. It is this crazy roller coaster that spins you around in circles as it goes around the track. It's ridiculous and we have to try it. And they have animal exhibits and shows around the park too, where you can check out some seals and even watch a dolphin show. But a quickie tip for your trip. Download the Six Flags app so you can order food ahead of time and collect it between rides while waiting. And if you're looking for something exciting to do, you can head over to Monterey Bay for a skydive. <laughs> So when you jump off the plane, your heart will kind of stop for a second. But after you get over the fear, you'll be treated to the amazing views of the Pacific Ocean. It's a must try, especially if you're an adrenaline junkie. And the tandem instructors were really experienced. They hugged us up on the plane and they were really, really encouraging, which made it feel super safe to jump with them. And we managed to watch basketball live at the Chase Center. And the game we watched was the Golden State Warriors versus the Phoenix Suns. The energy of the crowd was beyond anything that I could have imagined. People were chanting, jeering in unison. Being here, absorbing the energy of the crowd, watching the game live for the first time, it's an adrenaline rush. It's hard to describe. And all the excitement is gonna make you really hungry. So it's time to hit up a few food spots. If you want some amazing seafood, you can head over to Fisherman's Wharf. It's one of the highlights in San Francisco, and it has the most amazing seafood spots. A lot of the restaurants are kind of pricey, but there are some that are really affordable. This is called Chowders. They specialize in a homemade seafood chowder that's served in a sourdough bun. And there's fresh seafood that's fried with a perfect golden crust. And it's accompanied by this amazing view. And it's a great entry point to try out fresh seafood at an affordable price. We are at Chinatown, the largest Chinese enclave outside of Asia. The architecture, the music on the streets and the people, it makes you feel like you've been transported into an olden Chinese movie. And we had lunch at Hang Ah Tea Room, the first dim sum house in San Francisco. The dumplings are fat and juicy, with generous meat fillings encased by delicate dumpling skin. One of the best ways to experience the nightlife of San Francisco is to go to a comedy show and grab a couple of drinks. It feels really great to have a night full of jokes and laughter. It's been a while, but the energy of the comedians, the liveliness of the crowd, the city just feels alive. And if you need a break from the city, you can always take a day trip out or a road trip. And today, we are spending our day over at Yosemite. Hiking became wildly popular in San Francisco during and after COVID. I guess people were just really sick of being stuck at home, so a lot of them escaped to parks for a little bit of fresh air. 
and we've been stuck in our own little city for the last two years. So being out in nature is really, really refreshing. We're going there to see mountains, actual mountains, surrounded by lush jungles and waterfalls. That's just something that you can't see in Singapore. And it's so amazing to just sit down, take it all in, snap a picture or two, and do it with your friends. So if you come in March, you'll be blessed by wonderful, thunderous waterfalls. We were told that the ice caps start to melt in spring, so that's why the waterfalls are a little bit more active this time of year. But if you don't want to go too far, you can take a day trip north to the Moor Redwood Forest. It's a completely different world out here. You're surrounded by these massive trees, and it's unlike anything I've ever seen before. And it's a really good place to just take a walk, to enjoy nature and the sounds that come with it. And if you're lucky, sometimes the forest has this ocean mist that makes it even more magical. But we are not so lucky. So if you do manage to come, send us a picture because we want to see it. San Francisco has been a dream come true. Getting absorbed into the culture, experiencing new foods, stunning views and even some extreme spots. It's everything you could ask for on a first trip out of Singapore. Before coming back, we chilled in Polaris Lounge at SFO. They have really great food and shower facilities to get you prepared for your long flight home. And we managed to sneak in a quick nap before our flight. Thank you so much for watching! We hope this video has given you a great idea of how San Francisco is like now. And let us know in the comments below if you think the Bay Area has changed. We'll see you in the next video. Bye! Bye.